Well, let me illustrate. Uh, it's, it's somewhere in one of my recordings way back, but you see, when my wife left me, um, I had to divide the house. And being a pensioner, the equity that I had, about $170,000, was more than enough for a good deposit, but a lack of income, just a state pension. Not enough to have a house. So, there was Marshall left with a few paltry treasures. <laughs> 170,000. Compared to his home and, of course, the family. And, and he's in all the distress of losing what he loves and cares for and has been devoted to. And he realises that this 170 is going to just be frittered away. Buy himself a car and go and visit his son in England and it'll go on this, that and the other. And at the end of the day he'll have nothing. Ah, and he could see the hundred and seventy is a very little value to him indeed. A few paltry pleasures compared to all the joy he had. So, what did he decide to do? Well, he came across need, didn't he? A couple who needed to, I don't know, put in the piles to put their house on. Couldn't afford it. Needed a hundred thousand. And he gave him a hundred thousand. Someone else who needed to build a house where his wife was in Philippines. Needed help. His wife there was everything to him and couldn't bring her to New Zealand. And he was trapped in New Zealand both by the pandemic and by um, the need for income that he can earn here to, to make a hopeful future all good and lovely. So, I gave him 20,000. And came across my dear landlord who rescued me into good housing when suddenly I needed it at no notice. His goodness to me. At all intents and purposes, a wealthy man. I mean, he owned a, owns a house that's worth, well, it's in the millions. But he's got this huge, um, what I see as huge, 20,000 um, uh, credit card debt, which is a burden to him. Well, I can take that burden. You don't need to pay those high interest rates. Here, I give you 20,000. What's your bank account? <laughs> now, look, I'm blowing my trumpet here. I know that. I'm making myself look very noble. But it's not. Is pure rationality. I take a few paltry treasures, a few silly toys, and I build myself eternal habitation with it. You might say, well, what do you mean, the love of these people? Mm, yes and no. The love of God, my Heavenly Father. And he looks on Marshall and says, Ah, oh. <laughs> I see, Marshall, you've come to your senses. <laughs> yes, Dad. <laughs> Love you. Thank you for rescuing me, Dad. It is not that I have nobly put the, the world behind me and embraced God. 
given up a few paltry pleasures for an eternal treasure. And I see the sadness now of those people who haven't come to this realization yet. Perhaps yourself. And I would rescue you. <laughs> oh, noble chap. Marshall is what a noble guy. Hmm. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Let me recover a minute. Yes, well, I think this recording has come far enough. Far enough to rescue you too. May you be filled with the love of God. Filled with the joy. The utter provision. The assurance of his presence. His love and care. The absolute clearness in your heart that this is what you value. Your God is your dad. That you find in an astonishment that you do long to love. Your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and every other life form is yourself that they all be cared for that none of them be left out as you felt left out you don't want this to happen to anybody do you see you're filled with the love of God? It's blazing in front of you that you are his child. How else could you feel this way? You are the very substance of what your God is. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Haramai, haramai, haramai. That's the word in uh, New Zealand by the Maoris. Um, no, I'm not pronouncing it at all well, but for welcoming you onto the Marae, the refuge place, the safe place. The place where you'll find protection and provision and care. They're a lovely people at their heart. <laughs> they look uh, terrible when you see their haka. <laughs> but you see, we have the Holy Spirit. We see with God's eyes. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that marvellous? We see with the eyes of God because of his Holy Spirit that he's given to you and me to love him truly with. Do you know why? His pure self-interest. He longed for company, for a wonderful family to share his joy with. So he made you and me. Wow. <coughs> what a lovely dad we have, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dad. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for all that you are. 
we just thank you, thank you, thank you, Dad. I'm not going to add what probably I've added elsewhere, but look, you don't have to give away everything God's given you. That's a nonsense. I know you might read the Jesus story that way, sell all that you have and give to the poor. But we were talking about a very rich man there. By all means, give of your surplus, but make sure it is your surplus. Dad's given you the things that you need, and he wants you to care for it, just like he wants you to care for your body properly, that you might experience the fullness of life here in the universe of the transitory. You don't have to rush out and do what Marshall did. I mean, he did it with a good heart, but he didn't need to do it. I don't think so, you know, he could have just kept it in the bank and, uh, you know, waited until he, he found out why God has furnished him with this and, and used it accordingly. Not necessarily giving it away, but keep control of it in a way that you can use it to benefit. I mean, had I been able, I would have bought a house and I'd have had lodgers, and I'd have cared for the lodgers. And in fact, I might have somehow turned it into some sort of community. And that would have been a great blessing. I didn't see a way of um, buying a house, so I was left with a balance that, well, I, I saw a need and I met need, well, fair enough. But don't deliberately impoverish yourself, because then you just have to come back to God and say, I've given away, and can you replace it now, because I need it. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, you know, it's, it's not that reasonable. We don't have to um, rush in and put God's world right as if he hadn't, wasn't already putting it right. Uh, it's not trusting him at all. Um, we're given something and we have control of it, and it's to exercise control in a good and lovely way, not simply to throw it away, not simply to give it lightly or casually, um, or even give it at all, but to use it to good purpose. Um, he wants to bless you, let him bless you. Don't keep depriving him of that option by giving it away. But do, of course, use it to bless yourself in a nice and lovely way with purity of heart. You know, I mean, yes, they did give their tithes and offerings uh, to the Lord, but how did they do it? They took their whole family there and their priest and they sat down with the priest there in the temple and they enjoyed it together. Well, that's lovely. Yeah. Okay.